What's poppin', man? It's T.O. Double. This is the 15th episode of the Incrate Podcast, you dig? And I'm led to call this episode The Eyes of Your Understanding. The Eyes of Your Understanding. I want you to do something for me real quick because it's going to paint a beautiful picture about what we're referring to, okay? I want you to close your eyes. Now, I want you to envision a fire truck. Now, I want you to imagine this fire truck being red, okay? Now, imagine this same fire truck speeding down the street with the sirens blaring, okay? Now, open your eyes. Now, if you follow my instructions, I guarantee you that you literally saw a red fire truck speeding down the street with the sirens blaring. But I got a question for you. If your eyes was closed, how did you see that fire truck? Because the eyes that's in your head, your eyeballs, them are not the only eyes that you got. God gave you another set of eyes called the eyes of your understanding. Now the eyes of your understanding, those are the true eyes of a human being. Because you don't see with your natural eyes, you only see through those eyes. Everything that comes through those natural eyeballs lands on the mind where where the eyes of your understanding are. And if the eyes of your understanding are corrupted, you'll be able to see something with your natural eyes, but misinterpret the information. And if you're misinterpreting the information, you're walking in darkness. Because when God is telling you the truth about a particular subject, and you refuse to believe what he's saying about it, and you you begin to create your own concept about what things are, you're going to be in a lot of trouble because you're not going to understand what you're stumbling at. Because God is telling you, hey, that's a pothole. But you're saying, no, that's my girlfriend and you a girl. Or that's my boyfriend and you a boy. And because you're not wanting to believe what God is trying to paint on the eyes of your understanding, you falling into a hole. Did you know if everybody in the world was gay, that nobody would have no babies and all humanity would cease to exist? So that should go to tell you that that's a philosophy that leads to death. Don't you know everything that God is about leads to life? Now, I know it might seem like I'm coming down on that particular topic, but I really am led to, to speak on that because people don't understand that the eyes of their understanding have been darkened. And when a person's, you know, this is what happens when a person's understanding is darkened. You can try to speak to them about not just religion, but the logical aspects of why what they're doing and believing is wrong. And they still won't believe you or receive you or accept the information as true because they have been blinded. The scripture talks about the devil and what he goes about doing. It says that he blinds the minds of those who do, who do not believe the gospel of Jesus Christ lest they, you know, see the light and be saved. The truth is so powerful that the only way you can cancel it from working is from not seeing it and not hearing it. Jesus says they have closed their eyes so that they don't see me and they close their ears so that they don't hear me because if they ever open their eyes and just leave their ears open, they're going to understand with their heart and they're going to be healed. It ain't that people don't know uh, what to do to be delivered. It's the fact that, you know, people are in darkness and it's just like roaches. You know, when you walk in the kitchen, turn that light on, you know, hopefully it's not your kitchen that you living in today, but I'm sure some of y'all can relate. I don't like using this example, but I just got to paint the picture. You walk in the kitchen, you turn on the light, roaches scatter. Why? Because they don't want to be seen. They like the darkness. You know, because can't nobody see what they doing when it's dark. Did you know that's that's the same spiritual nature of people who don't know Christ? They love the darkness. And whenever the light is shining, they, they try to get the heck up out of there. Even some of the, you know, some people that when they saw this podcast come on, they scroll right past it with the quickness. Why? Because it's light. And the people that are um, in love with the darkness, they don't want nothing to do with the light because the light exposes that what they're doing is evil and they don't want nobody correcting them because they like what they're doing it's just like um people that like if you ain't got no clothes on you know you would prefer for it to be dark because you you got you butt naked 
And if that light comes on, well, your shame is going to be revealed. Well, that's how it is when people are in sin. They're not covered up. So they want to stay in the darkness because they don't have any covering. But Jesus, being the Lamb of God, he literally, you know how like a lamb, you can take the wool from, from a lamb and you can make clothes. That's what Jesus was doing when he was giving his life. He was taking the wool off of him so that he can clothe you and cover you up so that you can come in the light. So that you don't have to be ashamed like Adam and Eve. Did you know when Adam and Eve disobeyed God, the, one of the first things they, they was ashamed of was the fact that they was naked. And that was a spiritual representation of sinners. You know, they don't like the light because they see their nakedness. But God is not shining the light on you to make you uh, embarrassed or to offend you. He's shining the light because you naked. And it's not, it's not right for you to be naked out here in the spirit. You need to be clothed with righteousness. You know, some people think, you know, they try to call Christianity offensive. Christianity is not offensive. It just addresses the truth. It's the same way if you go out in public and you got a booger up your nose and you, you having a conversation with me and I say, hey, hey man, you got, you got boogers in your nose. Now you might be embarrassed, but you go get a tissue, you wipe your nose and you thank me. You say, man, thank you for telling me I had a booger in my nose. Cause after I left you, I was gonna have to go to a meeting to where I was gonna have 10 other people looking at me with them boogers in my nose, but you prevented that, thank you. Did you know that you, that's how you should do every Christian that comes up to you and tells you that what you're doing is, is out of alignment with God? Because you are not just living in the natural. You, you have an existence in the spirit as well as the natural. So you might be looking all crispy and fly in the natural, but if you're not right with God in the spirit, you as raggedy as I don't know what, thinking that you somebody. Jesus even spoke about this. He said it was this group of people uh, in the book of Revelations. He was speaking to them. He said, y'all think y'all balling because y'all rich. You know, y'all think that y'all got it all together, but you don't know that you blind, you naked, you poor, and you wretched. Now, he wasn't referring to the natural condition of them because they were you know, when you would see these people, they were, you know, probably had fancy clothes, fancy houses, lived good lives. But he was saying, I could see you in the spirit. And y'all jacked up. And you know why they was jacked up? Because they weren't um, believing God. They weren't living according to the truth. And when you don't live according to God's truth, it's because the eyes of your understanding have been blinded. You, when you don't believe what God is saying, it's, it's because you're blind. Because when you don't receive, because God is telling you the truth. It's like somebody who's trying to tell you the truth. You don't see what they saying because you, you can't see what they see, but they can see it. And they telling you what they see. But if you don't believe what they try to tell you is true, that makes you blind. It like, for example, if, if God is in a watchtower and he can see over the city wall, but you're on the ground and he says, oh, I see it's you know uh don't go through this particular door when you leave the city because i can see over this uh, uh uh wall that leads to a hole in the ground well if you say uh-uh no it don't and you walk through that door did you know you you just as blind as a bat you probably worse than a bat because he's trying to tell you what he sees in the spirit but you not believing it and it's causing you to walk in a the ma the same manner as a blind man you see what i'm saying that's why he says when you, when you don't believe God, you are blinded because he's telling you what's true. But the devil, he thinks it's his job, the devil, to lie to you. And when he lies to you, the reason he lies to you is because he can only govern you according to the amount of darkness that's in you. So the more you disbelieve God who's trying to tell you the truth and the more you believe the devil, the more under his control you are. Because remember, it's, God is not the only one with a kingdom. There is a kingdom of darkness. And the devil is the is the prince of darkness the bible calls him the the prince of darkness the god of this world and he can only govern you according to the amount of darkness that's in your life that's why he tries to fight so hard to keep you from the light to keep you from god to keep you from this podcast to keep you from the truth because if you start leaning on this side he starts losing his power over your life and if you get all the way over into this side Oh, it's done. He ain't got no more control over you. You're out of his jurisdiction. See, when you believe in lies, that means you're in his jurisdiction. That's why he's messing up everything in your life. You ain't got no peace. You know, you can't come to no conclusions of what's right and what's wrong because the devil's ruining your life.
God is a God of order. And the devil, since he's trying to stop what God is doing, he's, he's the reason why there's chaos. Why is it when you go into some of these restaurants, you don't even know what bathroom to go in no more because they done got it uh, uh, neutral gender or whatever. That's of darkness. You know, that's that's coming from people who have the, the eyes of their understanding darkened. You know, you looking at this dude, he got an Adam's apple, he got a, a, a muscles, he talking just like a man, but because he got a wig on and a dress and he telling you to call him a girl, you gonna call this man a she. That ain't nothing but darkness. That means the eyes of your understanding have been darkened and you've been blinded by the devil. And it's worse to be spiritually blind than it is naturally blind. Because if you naturally blind, you can still discern, uh, oh no, that's this is a dude. But if you if you got your natural eyes working, but you can still look at a person who's a man and call him a girl, that's worse than being naturally blind. Because the soul itself is corrupted. And it's been corrupted with deception. See, the Bible, out of all the things it calls the devil, it really emphasizes the fact that he's a deceiver and a liar. The devil, it literally says that he's the father of lies. Lying, his, his whole kingdom is built upon lies. And if the truth ever comes into his kingdom, his whole kingdom would just shatter because it's built upon lies. The walls are fortified with lies. The houses are made of deception. You see what I'm saying? His whole government is a government of treachery and deceit. And if God ever gets in there with his truth, his light, his love, it would destroy everything that he's built. So that's why he tries to keep you away from God. Because God is going to let you know what's proper. He's going to let you know what's right. He's going to let you know what's moral. He's going to let you know what's immoral. He's going to let you know where the hole is in the ground that you need to avoid. The devil ain't going to tell you none of that. He's going to say, it's okay for another girl to be with a girl. It's okay if you, you a man, but you want to get your penis cut off and call yourself a girl. That's called chaos. And, you know, when, when people want to take over, if there's order already in the city, they can't take over because there's already order. So what they do is they bring chaos. So that's the enemy. He, he's designed to bring chaos into your life. And just because the governments, you know, legislate something, that don't mean that it's right. You know, that government is not a reflection of the mindset of God because the government, this current government is against God. And a lot of this stuff that they legislating, you know, same sex marriage, uh, transgender and all this stuff, this stuff flies right in the face of the Bible. And the true aim of this stuff is to get rid of the Bible and to get rid of the church. And that's why you don't want to be um, receiving your, in your spirit um, what's coming from this world. This world is against God because even though God is God indeed, the, the, the current God of this world, he, he still has um, a time that he is trying to reign. But his reign has been cut short by Jesus Christ. And God, through Jesus, is saving as many people out of the devil's kingdom as he can. But you, you can only be saved if you receive the light, if you receive the truth. You know, you got to break the lies of the devil. You got to re start rejecting, you know, when they trying to tell you stuff that you know is wrong, but they trying to tell you it's right. You got to go with what your spirit is saying. Your spirit is telling you this is wrong. I don't care what nobody's saying. You got to go with God. God told you what was right. You don't need nobody trying to come in there and re-engineer uh, uh, your sense of morality because that's the devil trying to do uh, maintenance um, on your, your, the eyes of your understanding so that he can lead you into a trap. You feel me? There's much more to be said about this, man, but I'm approaching my 15-minute mark, man. So I'm T.O. Double, MK Podcast. Until next time, man, peace out.